By now, I'm sure most people are familiar with rain screens, or at least have heard of them. But what exactly are they, and why are they so critical to the durability of our walls? So much so that we include rain screens in almost every single one of our wall assemblies. In this video, we're breaking down the fundamentals of rain screens, and why you absolutely need one if you're working with a framed wall assembly. Let's get into it. The first and most important function of a rain screen is to provide a drainage gap between the cladding and the water control layer, or WRB. If the cladding is held against the WRB without a drainage gap, water will be held in tension against the wall, resulting in a buildup of hydrostatic pressure, driving that water through any holes, gaps, or imperfections in the membrane. Well, guess what? We tend to poke thousands of holes in that WRB when we directly attach our cladding to the wall, and so this drainage gap alleviates hydrostatic pressure, which is the driving force that could lead to leaks and serves as a capillary break. Remember, the cladding is not the water control layer, and it's not designed to be. Claddings are designed to shed water that falls onto the building, and the WRB is the final line of defense behind it. And so we're always assuming that some water will find a path behind the cladding, and we want to make sure that we're letting that water out. So how big of a gap do you need for drainage to occur? Well, it turns out not that much. As little as 1 16th of an inch can provide excellent drainage efficiency. And there's even drainable weather-resistive barrier products on the market that provide this integrated drainage gap, like HydroGap, Typar, or Tyvek Drain Wrap, which have textured surfaces that allow water to drain out of the assembly behind the cladding. Now, the function of drainage is a great start, but it can only get you so far in certain assemblies. When we only provide drainage with a tiny gap, we don't drain all of the water away, as oftentimes small droplets can be left behind and the cladding can remain quite wet, as capillary forces can hold that water in place within the material, and so it'll take some time for that excess water to dry out. Also, if the cladding is wet and absorptive, we can get inward vapor drive, especially if that cladding is warmed by the sun, and that can be a major wetting mechanism since this can lead to condensation within the wall cavity and on the backside of the drywall. So we not only want drainage, but we also want continuous airflow behind our claddings if possible to facilitate ventilation, and that can be accomplished with a gap that's about 3 eighths of an inch or larger. We also want to make sure that the top and bottom of the rain screen is open for continuous air movement, and so having a ventilated drainage gap allows for some of that excess moisture to be dried out and carried away by the constant movement of air. We get another benefit of having a ventilated gap, and that's it facilitates outward drying as well. This is becoming more and more important, especially as codes push for higher R values, as our buildings are staying wetter for longer. Sometimes moisture gets into the assembly, and vapor drive is from the inside outwards. If we have a semi-impermeable cladding like fiber cement, or an impermeable cladding like cellular PVC or aluminum, any moisture that's diffusing out of the wall will have a harder time drying out without a ventilated gap, whereas if we have airflow, it doesn't matter if we have an impermeable cladding material. Now, you don't want too big of a gap either, otherwise fire and critters can easily travel up that space, and so we want to limit the gap to about one inch maximum in most cases. Sometimes we need more than an inch if we're attaching wood claddings over rigid insulation, as these claddings require an inch and a quarter fastener embedment, but this is the exception, not the rule. There are plenty of ways to achieve a ventilated drainage gap, whether it's standard wood furring strips, corrugated plastic battens, entangled mesh, or dimple mats. The point is, we want the benefits of drainage and drying to ensure that our buildings remain durable for the entire service life of the structure. It also provides some well-needed redundancy to our wall assemblies, especially if we have imperfections in the water control layer. Guys, if you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like, and subscribe for more weekly building science videos, and head over to our website at siri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics, including rain screens, drainage gaps, and general moisture management. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.